Hey there, this is Alex at Realize Displays. I'd like to show you how I got to work to um, use the API Explorer to work together with the Google Calendar API and allowing you to pull certain events from a Google Calendar and uh, do some other things as well that their API allows to. This took me a little bit just because obviously you can imagine Google has quite extensive documentation and just finding the right spots was actually the hardest part. Um, so I'll get into this in just a second, but first what you're going to need to do is make sure that you have a calendar to um, use for this. And first I, I had found a uh, um, calendar that was from um, church somewhere, I believe, <laughs> and it just had a lot of events, so I just wanted to use it so I could actually see some events on the calendar. Um, the main thing, if you're ever going to do a... Um, a demo or something like that. Um, when you're in Google Calendar, you want to click the down arrow and then you want to go to the calendar settings here. Um, and first off, a couple things you're going to need is down here where it says calendar address, you're going to need this entire calendar ID. That will need to be part of your URL. And then in the sharing settings, you need to make sure that it is public, that this calendar is public. Uh, now, that's important uh, for two different reasons is, uh, first, when the calendar is public, it allows you to pull the events when you only just have a authentication key. There's more steps involved if you want to pull a personal calendar from somebody with that, that is not public. Um, you need to use their OAuth authorization, which is some extra stuff. So what I would just say is, for the most part, if you're going to be doing a display and you want to open a calendar, um, create a new one, make it public. You can even share it with your clients so that they can edit it as well. The events can more easily be pulled into your display. So let's go back to um, Intuiface here. Um, and let's take a look at what happens. So let's uh, play it and we can see that this is pulling from a the calendar. I just did some simple formatting. It does not look pretty. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure it works. But you can see that there is, let's say, staff devotions, praise team, this kind of stuff. These are the names, and then the summaries are below. Uh, so there's also parts of the API where you can actually search um, uh, for something. So let's just say I type in pastoral. It will bring up two of the events that have this in there. If I want to uh, think Wendy is in Nope, maybe not. But I can clear it out, and let's just say I want to find staff. I can type in staff. And so the nice thing about this is that what, what's actually happening here is it's filtering the, the results um, uh, by me binding whatever's in here to whatever uh, the API call is inside of API Explorer. So API Explorer looks at this, and then it sends the call out to the program. Um, the program returns with the results, and then these are the only ones that are actually delivered. So these are the only two that exist at this point. Um, as soon as I delete it, then a new API call is sent, and the new results are then returned. Um, another important thing to make this work, let's go back to editing mode here. Inside of Google, you need to get to this page. And in a way, it's kind of cool because uh, Google has a whole bunch of APIs that you can access. And once you have them set up, this is kind of your API manager. So go to consoledevelopers.google.com, um, where you, I think you can Google the Google API manager here. But you want to get here. Um, I'm not going to click here so you don't see my API registration key, because that's something you want to keep personal. But all you want to do is, is come to this page. And then you'll type in calendar. And then you'll see the Google Calendar API. At the top, you when you first sign up, you want to make sure that you just click the button to enable the Google Calendar API. And then what's cool is you can see the different requests um, that happen. Obviously, you can see that it's 312 right now. You can see the requests that I just made recently here. Um, you can see the traffic that are the cool thing about the Google Calendar API is for free, you can have up to a million requests per day. So you can do quite a bit of uh, calls from this without having to ever worry about um, paying it at all. So the other thing, okay, so you just you enable the Google Calendar API. 
then you'll want to create credentials here. And then this will just be a button that gives you your API key. Next step, um, after you get to, let's go back to this library here and let's find that Google Calendar. Oh, I'm sorry, I was already there. Um, the button that we want to go to is documentation here. Now, the, what you actually need is it's going to bring you to this page. It's a little bit buried. Um, you click here into the reference at the top. And then since we're just pulling events, a lot of this other stuff has other coding type things. The, what we need for the API Explorer just to pull events is here in events. And then just the list of events. So here is uh, the buried HTTP link that you need. You can see that it has a calendar ID. Um, and then the uh, next important thing that you need is um, uh, in your parameters, you'll have a key parameter. And it is only uh, just lowercase KYE. Set that as the name of your parameter. And then as the value for it inside of API Explorer, it is simply the API key. So that is one parameter, the first parameter that you should make. It is a standard parameter. It is not a header or anything else like that. That's all you need. Down here, you'll be able to see that you can fetch different pieces of information from the Google Calendar. Um, for example, um, you can pull single events. You can. Uh, uh, like what I used uh, inside of mine, I limited my um, events that show for the next seven days. So you would set uh, your time max and time min of the events that it's going to pull um, from here. So you would set a parameter as time max, and then you would set this date format as the value for that. And the same here with the minimum. So your start and end times of the events that you want to pull. Um, next, you'll notice uh, if I scroll up a little bit, there is a queue property. Now, this is how I use the searching. So if you set a parameter, just call it queue. And then uh, I believe what I did for the value is I just put a star. And I believe that just means it's open for anything that should return all the events. Um, don't quote me on that, but that's what I did. Um, but then what's nice is uh, that's what I used for the binding. So if you if I open up the Google or the church calendar X-ray, there we go. You'll see in the actions that I have uh, a key parameter, um, the set order by, which allows me to order the events, the set queue. So I have my um, text input here bound to the queue function. So whenever this updates, it puts in the value for Q here, and that's how we return that. Um, and then the time, min, and max, that kind of stuff. Um, I believe also you can use the pagination part of this as well. So let's say there's multiple events for 7 11 uh, for yesterday, then you can actually group them together into a page. Um, I'm still learning more about that. But anyways, um, those are the steps you need to follow. You need to go. The main thing is to set up and enable the Google Calendar API in your own account, get your key, go to that reference documentation, and then uh, copy this link and then put in your key inside as a parameter. I'll lowercase KYE as the name and then your um, API key as the value for that, that first parameter. And then you'll be good to go. Hopefully that helps explain. Uh, good luck to everyone who wants to use the Google Calendar API.